what I want to talk about today are unplanned processes, and that's sort of unplanning in a kind of larger master planning sense of shared infrastructure, which is the coming together uh, around the production and maintenance of small scale infrastructural configurations as a site of resistance to the world class city. The context is Savdagevra, a resettlement colony on the edge of Delhi, established in 2006. Previous slum dwellers were given plots of land which they develop as per their own means, which are either 18 or 12.5 square meters. Um, that's small. When I first arrived to Savda a long time ago now, I quickly identified a key feature that was driving housing investment, toilets. Um, this was an investment often triggered by a daughter coming of age or a bride entering into the family home. And these are photographs that show the same plot uh, changing over seven years and how a shack in 2010 where the family would wash outdoors and poo in a field um, has over time transformed into a four-story structure each time with the addition of a toilet. But in this peripheral and disconnected settlement, where was the shit going? In the absence of the state and when people just get on with it, uh, residents were connecting their toilets to pits underneath the home and the result was that often this effluent was discharging into open grey water drains. And it was in this context that I started working with the local NGO Cure to, de to develop a project to bring sanitation to this neighbourhood. The final project had four components. Um, In-house toilets, which was to be resident-led resident -led investment, serviced by communal drains, uh, a common a sort of communal septic tank, and then a, a reed bed upflow filter, which catered for about 2,000 people. Um, I'm, I don't have the time to go to the ins and outs. It was a very long process of, of many meetings and, yeah, and funding. It was very challenging, but um, kind of miraculously, we, we started the project, and this is my favorite image of construction starting with a digger to dig this rather large hole um, into which the tanks were put. Streets were dug up, sewers were laid, and, find, uh, and this is a manhole by a resident, a man who's actually a resident on the street. And finally, an image of it not so long ago when it returns to being a sort of banal park in a peripheral neighborhood. Parallel to these infrastructural improvements, the politics of shit. Residents went from being victimized population to one that can instead stake a claim and become politically active in urban life. This was most apparent in the all-woman operation and maintenance team responsible for the long-term management of the project. But it was also evidenced by the establishment of a, res of a residence welfare association, a legitimate political body and the first of its kind in a resettlement colony in Delhi. The president, however, was of course a man. But what I really want to talk about and leave you with today is this idea of the practice of architecture that learns and imagines how those cast out can participate in the making of the city, of their city. Working as an architect in such a context is promising, not because it promises free and inspiring designs, but precisely because it's a practice willing to get tangled up in the laws and politics of everyday life. Putting in place this kind of community-led infrastructure is a balance between the host population and their history, culture, and ambition and maintenance, sort of maintenance schedules, which is the kind of local and existing institutional capacity to deliver on a kind of technical thing. And finally, the volume of a tank, which is based on kind of finance available, um, codes of practice and basic engineering. But with this comes a range of obstacles, the intransigence of individual owners, the narrowness of the street, funding and government approval. So any approach that privileges one over the other, I suggest is grossly missing the point. But this is a slow process. Between 2013, when we started, and today, of the 322 households in the catchment area, only 150, 1,000 people, catering for 1,000, have actually connected. I often argue that such a speed is critical in engendering the ability of the less powerful to engage so there is an investment in keeping something not quite part of the market so that capital, speculators, cannot enter. However, urban settings are dynamic and indeed impatient from this morning land markets. Infrastructures and people arrive quickly, often creating flows that are in conflict with the slowness and high social investment required by community-led improvement. 
In this diagram, I chart the current capacity of the project and where it could go in the future, demarking a kind of failure point. Already between 2013 and today, driven by the arrival of sanitation, we can see a, densif a densifying process. In 2013, only 10% of houses were two plus story, whilst today it's 34. If Savdagevra continues to grow like this, we will quickly outpace, Savd uh, outpace Dharavi in terms of density. So the arrival of a 150 millimeter RCC pipe has accelerated material, political, and social change, begging the question, do we see this as an intermediate technology or a completely new paradigm for delivering services? Thank you. Can I, can I just jump in with a quick question? Um, obviously, uh, the kind of scale that needs to be achieved in, in these kinds of settlements uh, requires an army of uh, architects and designers and engineers. Um, do, you, do you feel that it's possible for us to transfer the skills to the community so that they can do this themselves? I think absolutely, and that's a sort of, um, that's a technical question also about how to um, empower communities to be able to maintain and look after their, their sort of systems. I think Rahul's projects are great examples, and he talks about this quite freely, about how without a sort of robust maintenance, they'll fall apart. And on the issue, I mean, infrastructure often in the West is a sort of quite benign thing that we don't even realize. And I think in countries like India, it, it has, it can, infrastructure has that sort of capacity to really, um, kind of galvanize a community and so that technical expertise is not only necessary but it's how you create the sort of um, tapestry of community building, neighborhood building and then it has you know an incredible, I mean I'm talking about the political consequences but the sort of um, kind of the decorum that what happens when you when you change um, is, is, a, is a sort of very important phenomena. 